Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Sunday, which means it's time for a new message. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Kayla, and this channel is all about meeting you where you are in your journey with Christ and partnering with you on that journey as you decide to grow and strengthen your relationship with Christ. All right, guys, as always, let's jump right into it. I'm going to leave a couple of worship songs and they'll pop up around the screen for you to listen to in your own time, or you can pause the video and listen to them before we get into the message. So today we're coming from John 16, 33. John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So today's message is going to be about how we have peace in the midst of troubles. So a lot of times I think that people think that your journey with Christ is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and it's a cakewalk. And that nothing bad happens, and if anything bad does happen, you're just supposed to act like everything's fine. And that is not reality. So what we're going to do is we're really going to dissect what's happening here in scripture. As always, you guys know that I love to give you context. So we're going to look at the context of the scripture and then we're going to break it down so that we can apply this to our life. So context. In the scripture, Jesus is telling his disciples to have peace, even though they may experience a lot of tribulations. But let's rewind a little bit and look back at why God is saying this. Why is Jesus telling his disciples this? So if you look at the entire passage of John 16, Jesus is really pouring out his heart to his disciples. and He's really preparing them for his departure. He's telling his disciples various things like, you will see me no more and then you'll see me again. He's saying things like your sorrow will be there for a minute and then it will turn into joy. He also compares this time of the disciples' life as a woman going into labor. He says that for a little while there will be pain, but after the birth, there will be great reward and there will be joy. And his disciples are kind of confused and not really understanding him. And so Jesus leaves them with the scripture and he says, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world even though there's gonna be tribulation. So I wanna really hone in on the feelings of the disciples in this moment. For three years, they've had Jesus walking by their side, being their teacher, being their leader. Then all of a sudden, Jesus begins to speak a little differently. He begins to talk about how he's gonna leave and how he's gonna depart. And can you imagine the feelings that the disciples are feeling as they are having to face the reality that their leader is about to go away and still trying to wrap their head around what Jesus is saying. So Jesus is telling them that this is gonna be really hard for you guys. This is gonna be a big tribulation. And as you continue to read the book of John and the other gospels, you see that the disciples went through a lot of different things as Jesus experienced his arrest and his death. Some left, some denied him, some faced persecution. And so Jesus prepared them that you guys are gonna have a lot of tribulation. But the thing that Jesus says that is important is that even though you will experience these tribulations, I want you to be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. I want you guys to think about some of the hardest moments that you've had in your life. Were you of good cheer believing that the Lord was there for you? Or were you defeated and discouraged, not believing the promises that the Lord has given you in his word? I know I personally can say there have been moments where I have felt so discouraged and discontent and dissatisfied in my moments where I have been through tribulation. It can be really hard to focus on what God promised you when you have so many problems in front of you. But the good thing is that Jesus said, I have given you peace. There's another scripture in the word, a couple chapters actually before this, where Jesus says, my peace I leave to you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So let's talk about what does peace mean? What is Jesus talking about when he's talking about peace? So the word peace is defined as freedom from disturbance. It's also defined as a state or period where there is no war or where war has ended. And it's also defined as tranquility. Peace does not mean a lack of issues. It does not mean a lack of troubles or lack of problems. Peace is a contentment and a freedom within those troubles. And so Jesus has left us that freedom and that will to be able to have tranquility in the midst of trials. There's another scripture in the word that encourages us to count it all joy when we go through trials. How can we count things joy when we are going through things that seem terrible, things that seem like we're not gonna get through the end of it or we're not gonna get to the other side. And it's because Jesus leaves us with that gift of peace. I want you to understand that when God gives 
he gives freely. And that means freely. I know that it's very hard for us to understand how we can get anything freely because in this world, we know ain't nothing free, okay? Everything at a price. But God is a God who gives freely. He gave his son freely and he gives us the benefits of his son freely. He gives us peace. And so Jesus in this scripture, again, is telling his disciples, have peace, knowing everything that's about to happen. Jesus knows that he's about to get crucified. He knows that his disciples are about to scatter. He knows that one is about to deny him. He knows another is about to betray him. And yet in the midst of all of the chaos that's about to happen, Jesus says, in this world, you're going to have troubles. Things are going to be chaotic. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's important for us to understand that peace is not something that we attain, but it's something that we live out. We've already been given peace, right? So we have it. We can't attain it. If you are attached to Jesus, you have peace. How do you work it out? It's within you. And so how do we do that? How do we work out peace? How do we live a life of peace? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean out on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. And so we see that the key to having peace is to trust in God. Are we trusting God with our lives? Do we believe that God is going to be there for us in the midst of our trials and tribulations? Or do we think that we're doing life alone? Do we think that we know more than him and that we know a better solution to figuring out our problems than he does? The word of the Lord also says that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So God knows a solution to the most impossible looking situation that you may be going through. All God asks for you to do is to have peace. In the scripture, Jesus didn't say, be of good cheer because you figured out a solution. He didn't say be of good cheer because you have all the answers. He didn't say be of good cheer because everything is going well. He said be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Christ has already overcome everything. He's overcome the world. Even though because we live in a sinful world, we have to encounter struggles and trials and tribulations and sickness, God still has overcome all those things. There's not anything that you can go through that God cannot bring you through. Jesus is the means to peace. Jesus is the means to getting you through those situations that seem impossible. So I just want you guys to be encouraged and know that if Jesus can have peace, knowing that he had to go to the cross and die, and if he can tell his disciples to have peace, knowing that they're about to lose their leaders, how much more does he want us to have peace as we go through our day-to-day -day lives? And so I just want you to know that Jesus is there with you. He's there for you. And that if he's telling you to have peace in the midst of tribulations, it means that you're able to do it. God. God wants you to have peace. He wants you to enjoy your life. He doesn't want you to be anxious and worried. And he doesn't want you to be stressed. He wants you to enjoy life. And so, guys, the point of this message today is just to encourage you to have peace in the Lord. Trust in him. Remember the scriptures that we talked about. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be of good cheer. God has given us the gift of peace, and so we just have to use it and work it out in our everyday lives. Thank you guys so much for being here through the message. I hope that you can have a week full of peace. I hope that you've learned something today through the word. As always, guys, I love to hear from you. Comment down below one of your favorite things that was said today in the message, or comment down below some points or some words of encouragement that you can give to someone else who's watching this video. Guys, I can't wait to see you on Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday. I love you all. God loves you more. See you soon.